Hello you all, I'm Black Witch Yaya. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. And today we are going to go over a recent documentary that was very interesting that I watched on HBO called Call Me Miss Cleo, which is of course about Miss Cleo herself, the psychic legend, I guess we can call her. And you may have known her from her catchy catchphrase, call me now. Did I do that good? Call me now. Call, wait, call me now. The cards can reveal things that you will never see by yourself. Call me now for your free tarot reading. But before we get into this video, if you remember the infomercials for Miss Cleo, if you remember anything about that era, from the information that you know, or from just if you watched the documentary yourself, comment down below. Do you believe that Miss Cleo is she an entertaining fraud? or entertain true psychic what do you believe have you ever called her before back in the day did you ever get a reading from her if you did please let us know down below what do you believe she truly is because from this documentary no one really seems to know so while you're commenting that i want to let you guys know i'm about to get my miss cleo on because i am concocting a crystal dry rub which is a mixture of herbs that you can use to keep and cleanse your crystals i have them all mixed up today to make this process a little easier for the video but you can sprinkle this in your jewelry box where you keep your crystals on your altar where you keep your crystals if you're about to charge them in the full moon or sunbathing whatever just add a little bit of the crystal dry rub to make everything more enhanced and to enhance the properties of your crystals also the bling on my neck if you want a gold onk and eye of auras is very limited supply right now you can get yours from blackwitchyaya.com before they all sell out also remember with this necklace it's not real gold okay so keep it cute so on the height of infomercials in the 90s there's one person that really stood out psychic networks were popular at this time everyone was a psychic everyone was calling for a reading for counsel but one person was like the beyonce of it Miss Cleo. When you think of psychic networks, you think of Miss Cleo. Miss Cleo referred to herself as, I'm going to say referred to herself as because as you know throughout the documentary, they didn't really know who she was. So I'm going to say she referred to herself as a voodoo priest and she was known by her friends to be very disciplined in her practice through meditation, through taking care of her altar, communicating with her spirits because those were the ones that guide her through her practice. So in her earlier life, Miss Cleo, also known as Yuri Harris, she was a performer, darling. She was into theater. She attended the Langston Hughes Performing Arts School. And they also had people there who attended the school with her that had information on her as well. This was in Seattle, the Langston Hughes Performing Arts School. We don't really know where she's from at this point. There she was known to perform and produce plays as well. She was known to be very nice and very eccentric. But along with her good acting skills, she was known to act on and off the stage. A lot of people said in mid conversation, she was like change her voice and she could come up with these different characters. So that kind of leads us to what's gonna happen in the documentary. And with her changing her voice, coming up with these characters, the people who went to school with her never known her to have a Jamaican accent. And we're gonna cover that accent a little bit later, but from their recollection, they never remember her having a Jamaican accent. And Miss Cleo was actually a character that Miss Cleo, Yuri Harris, written and came up with for a play. So she was originally just on paper as a character for a play. Some say she actually performed in this play as Miss Cleo, who was supposed to be a Jamaican Shango shaman. So this started out as just an idea in her head. So like I said, she was known to act on and off stage. During the play, she would have these actors, but she never paid them. And she would kind of use health as an excuse, like, oh, I have sickle cell anemia. Oh, I have cancer, which I feel like she shouldn't have said because we'll find out later on. But she would come up with these excuses as to why she wasn't paying the actors that were performing in her plays. And then eventually she just stopped going to the school, never to be found again. So eventually later on, Miss Cleo sees an advertisement. I'm going to call her Miss Cleo because that's just what we know her as. But she sees an advertisement for the Psychic Readers Network who needed a reader. So at first she was working behind the camera with the person who was in the current position, a white woman who was reading cards and then she kind of said you know what this isn't making sense she's just talking crazy it sounds like she's acting she's reading the cards wrong this is not how it's supposed to go so someone in the higher ups told her we're like can you lay out the cards for her to maybe make it easier can you like you know just kind of tell her what the cards mean so when she does it, it sounds a little bit smoother try that out it still didn't work so miss Cleo herself gave it a try she said listen i don't know if i want to 
to do this. This is a business at the end of the day. I do this for real. I'm going to sit down, read these cards. Y'all tell me what y'all think, but do not tell me how and what to read. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do what I do when I'm at home pulling my cards. So of course we know she did it ran perfectly they loved her and within two months miss cleo was that girl okay she took over the psychic networks they had the highest views that they have ever seen was getting the most calls that they had ever gotten because miss cleo was the person that they needed for the mission that they were on she was doing so good to the point where one of the high high higher ups told her like listen your life is never going to be the same after this and it wasn't now, in this documentary, they did their research. They had people who worked for the Psychic Network. So, like, for myself, I don't really remember the Miss Cleo advertisements. I remember seeing her. I'm familiar with the name. But I have a very vague memory of it because I believe it came out in 97 to 2002. I was a baby, okay? And so, I don't really remember, but I, I'm familiar with her, but I just don't have a clear memory of it. It wasn't until I seen that episode of That's So Raven where she was pretending to be Miss Cleo instead of Psychic. It said Psychic kicks and that's when I said oh my god those are the commercials I used to see when I was little so very faint memory but I thought just from thinking oh when you call you get to speak to Miss Cleo that wasn't the case when you called you were speaking to basically these telemarketers these phone customer service representatives some very few were actually experienced but most of them had no idea what in the world that was they were reading off of a script they did no background no interviews like no one even said hey read me real quick so i can know you legit they were just random people who needed to answer the phone keep the people on the phone for at least 18 minutes and the goal of the call was to collect their information at the end so basically they just could have a catalog of a bunch of people to send advertisements to and the cost was 4.99 per minute and the goal was to keep them on the phone for eight minutes and when they called most of them was placed on hold now the part that surprised me the most was that these people were reading from a script so immediately I'm like do these people on the phone not know that they're not psychic and they're just giving them generic information like for example and I tell y'all to watch out for readers like this if you ever side note off the documentary if you ever go get a reading and the person is just reading the cards and that's it that's not a good reading if they just pull you have the three of swords that means there's someone trying to block your blessings and your goals everybody can think of somebody right now that's trying to block their goals everybody in this life everybody has an op whether you know it or not there's always someone who don't want you to reach your goals that's so generic but if they're like you have the three of swords someone in your family is stopping you from reaching your goals i feel like it's on your father's side of the family someone that you grew up close with but then something happened and you got separated you went to school with if it's more specific and you could really get a, vi a visualization of what they're talking about that's a reading they should be able to communicate with their spirits to tap into your energy your spirit guys their spirits and to talk to your spirits and come up with information that's directed towards you anybody could read cards anybody Anybody could pull a card and look at the little book that it come with and read the definition but do they truly know how to apply it to you and go into detail what the cards are talking about that's one and if they ask your zodiac sign newsflash sorry hate to break it to you they're reading your zodiac sign not you so if you're a gemini trust me that reading probably applies to me too also with that beautiful rant i also wanted to mention I do not offer reading. So if you get a DM from a person pretending to be me, it is not me. I do not accept any money that's outside of my website. And I myself do not offer readings. I only refer to the Baron for readings. And that's why his page is linked to my website. So if you ever got a reading from quote unquote me, call your bank because that was a fraud. I do not DM people first. I do not offer readings. I don't do none of the things of the things. Okay, so don't fall for the okie doke. But back to the documentary, I was honestly surprised that they were reading off a script to the point where I'm like, do these people not know that they're reading off a script and they're not real psychics? But one of the people who were a phone call representative said some people were so desperate and so lonely that they just literally wanted someone to talk to. They didn't care if the person on the other end was a psychic, was a voodoo priestess, was a mom of two. They did not care who that person was. They just wanted to get some information off their chest and just feel like someone is listening no matter the cost. Now, speaking of talking, Miss Cleo talked as well, okay? She spoke with a Jamaican accent that many people believe to be fake. And honestly, from watching the documentary, from listening to what people said that she didn't have it when she was younger, it's kind of like, wait, is it fake? Because I ain't going to lie. They said, oh my gosh, Western people fell for it. White people fell for it. But I'm like, I too fell for it. I did not know that accent was fake. 
I know like Jamaican accents to me some people have more like inflations with their words in different ways but to me I thought it was a real accent but granted I'm a fan of accents in general so you could throw any accent at me and I'm like wow oh my gosh amazing you're really showing your culture so one young lady on a documentary by the name of Andrea she is an author and a scholar for the Caribbean honey and she said that her and her friends knew that she was speaking with a fake accent like it was a joke in Jamaica like oh my god look at this girl speaking with this accent everybody follow for it like even they're like we know that's fake but I'm like, maybe because they got an ear for it, they were able to spot it more. But I did not know that accent was fake. I thought when people mocked her, of course, that's fake. But I thought she was real true. Well, go on, pull up on me yard, Jamaican. Like, I thought she was real. Boop, boop, boop. Like, I thought she was Jamaican food. And Andrea said that she believed a lot of people fell for it. Just because during this time, it was really a true belief that Caribbeans were like these magical, mystical voodoo people and had these special powers and all that stuff. And she feels that the network probably amped it up a little bit just so they can have like a caricature, a caricature of like a mammy, like a, you know, Miss Cleo was, you know, a solid tall woman. So they're thinking because of her size and her accent, the way she provides comfort for people, she could be like the modern day mammy. Like she will make white people feel comfortable. She make people feel safe. Let's bring that aspect of the mammy character to Miss Cleo to really amp it up some. So they told her, yeah, speak Patois. Well, Jamaican it up, put it on a show. So I'm sure she turned it up a couple notches as well, just to please the production. And I feel that's true because Miss Cleo said, even the producer stated for her not to share, that she went to an all-girls boarding school just so it wouldn't make her look, she assumed, too educated. And this is one connection I feel may be in my head. So let's pause right here. What I'm thinking is maybe because she went to an all-girls boarding school around a lot of white people maybe she lost her identity maybe she wanted to tap into some blackness so maybe she said hey you know jamaicans are cool let me be real black and be jamaican this is what i'm thinking that she's thinking because i don't know who taps into an identity picks up the accent and just takes on that entire culture that was a thought maybe she was trying to find herself because she didn't have you know anyone around her like that growing up so i don't know so this was going on for a long periodically amount of time okay so they were making their money. They made millions and millions and millions and $24 million off of a commercial that Miss Cleo did where she was on set for two days and only paid her $1,700. But we'll get into that because that was discovered in the lawsuit because Florida, of course, Florida always got something to do with something. Florida sued Miss Cleo. You may be wondering why in the world would they sue Miss Cleo? It's just readings on the screen. It says for entertainment purposes only like people should know better than the call. They call it themselves, right? They're adults. But here's the thing, not some of the people who called the network, of course, they got billed. But some people in that mix that they were billing never even called the network, but were being billed hundreds of dollars. And some people said, listen, my kid called. I didn't even know they were calling, but still being billed. So, of course, in the media, they're not going to say the state of Florida is suing the Psychic Readers Network. No, they're going to say the state of Florida is suing Miss Cleo because she was the face of the company. When you thought that network, you didn't think about anybody else except for Miss Cleo. So, of course, it sounds good to say, you know what, we're suing her. So, everybody's going to be like, oh, my God, what happened? What happened? What happened? So, during this lawsuit, someone was able to dig up Miss Cleo's birth certificate. And it shows that she was not born in Jamaica. She was born in California to a wealthy family. Maybe thinking, where in the world does this accent come from? Where in the world does this Miss Cleo character come from? But just a random fact in the documentary, Miss Cleo wasn't her only personality that she tapped into. There was also a guy named Max who popped up when she needed to rest. And then there was also this deep metaphorical character called Premier who spoke in poem and not direct and was very intellectual and grasped people as he spoke because no one could really understand what they were saying. But these are also personalities that her friends saw in her, in Miss Cleo and Yuri. So getting back into the lawsuit, what was also discovered was Miss Cleo's name was forged in the bill. So basically there will be a bill saying, hey, you owe $809 because you placed a call at this time, this time, this time. And at the end, it will say sincerely Cleo, but that wasn't Cleo's signature. So number one, forgery. And then going over the contract that Miss Cleo signed, they discovered she wasn't even really benefiting from the company. The company was making millions upon billions of dollars 
And Miss Cleo was being paid pennies, just a couple thousand every so often. All the material that was being sent out with her face and name on it, from tarot cards to board games, all the commercials that were shot, she was barely being paid anything. So I'm assuming that they assume like, okay, listen, we know she ain't doing no fraud because first of all, she would make sure that her check clear if she was really dipping it and doing with the two owners of the company that was basically manipulating her and just using her and because they owned the whole Miss Cleo character. So with all the press going on, Miss Cleo was dropped from the lawsuit just because she was the face of the company, not getting too involved in what was going on behind the scenes. But of course the media is going to say Miss Cleo's a fraud, Miss Cleo's a fraud because it sounds more catchy and captivating and attention grabbing than the Psychic Readers Network. So even after she was dropped, that didn't get as much media press and she was pissed about that. She was like, listen, y'all was talking about me getting sued, getting sued, getting sued. But as soon as I get dropped from the lawsuit, why is that not getting that much coverage? Because of course, they want to sell dollars at the end of the day as well. And using her name was associated with money for everybody else except for her. So from this point on, with the Psychic Network being closed down, they came up with the settlement, had to pay back all of the charges they made and cancel all the bills that were owed. So they kind of just disappeared. So did Miss Cleo just a little bit. She had gigs here and there for car lots for serial commercials her voice was used in video games but it wasn't as big as it was when she was associated with the psychic readers network so she in a sense went into a shell her life did change as the higher up before said it would but not in the best of ways she had to get forced to be pulled out of her home by her friends to be like look come over for our barbecue every week let's do that through that she found her godson and with her godson they were going to a lot of lgbtq plus community events to speak out against bills that were being passed that was anti-LGBTQ+. So she spoke out against that. Her godson eventually came out, so she came out as well. So she was then refining her voice in a community that supported her. So now Miss Cleo is in a relationship and that ended up kind of fading because the former girlfriend was saying that it kind of felt that they eventually became roommates instead of mates. But she shared with her one night that she had a dream of an elderly woman in a chair in this foggy, cloudy type of environment. And she looked at Miss Cleo and said, Yuri, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here yet. So in that moment, Miss Cleo knew that her time was coming to an end. And surprisingly, she accepted it. You may be thinking like, okay, where is that coming from? While well, all of a sudden she's having that dream. So we know Miss Cleo, for what we know, is a psychic. So eventually, I guess that was her warning or her vision of what was going on in her life. And eventually she was diagnosed with cancer. So she went to the Bahamas for like her final hurrah, her last big trip, but wasn't able to make it throughout the whole trip. She had to fly back home where later she passed away in a hospital, in hospice. That's why earlier I was like, oh, I hope she, why she had to joke about cancer to those people that she weren't paying on. Like, I don't know. So now in the documentary, there were a couple of her friends who actually gave their experience with Miss Cleo. And one actually said at a get together, his friend was there. Miss Cleo told him, hey, be careful with the left side of your body. You're going to start having trouble with the left side of your body. And eventually he got into an accident and the left side of his body was paralyzed. So that was just one of many examples of their friends being like, no, we believe Miss Cleo because some things that she told us, told people that we love our family members that she should not have known, she knew and was able to share it with us. So that's what made me think like, dang, was she a true psychic just misplaced? And not being able to show her gifts fully and authentically where she had to kind of turn into a machine where people in their back was doing evil or was she a fraud from the beginning pretending she had a jamaican accent not really telling people where she's from my thing is like where's her family where's her parents where's the people close-knit who could really give the tea like listen i'm her sister and she was acting like this, this and that there's not too much people that was like and i'm like where's the family so Miss Cleo was truly a mystery. That's the one thing I'm like, there was no one else that kind of really knew about her. She was able to keep her life a secret ever since she was a kid. Like what caused that? What happened to her? Was she tapping into these different personalities to avoid who she truly was and to want it to like recreate her existence? Or was she truly, or was she faking in the English accent the whole time? And she really did have a Jamaican accent or was... Did she feel connected to Jamaica and want to be accepted by, by her Jamaican family or what was it? And to be honest, y'all, I never believed she was fake because I'm very careful as to what people call fake 
because I know sometimes everyone in spirituality can be called fake. Crystals don't work. Candles don't work. This don't work. This don't work. That don't work because they're biased to like their own religious beliefs. So they can only think within their religions to the point where they think everything else is the devil and fake. So I was always very careful as to who was calling her fake, who was calling her a fraud, because I'm like, okay, so what do you believe? Do you believe she's fake because you believe what she was doing was demonic or you believe she's fake because you actually have some information behind your reasoning as to why you would call her a fraud? So I never really took that into account. Of course, there's like Miss Cleo jokes like, oh, you think you Miss Cleo? This isn't that. But I don't know if this documentary helped it. I just really want to know why the Jamaican accent, like where did that come from? So even though this documentary was very detailed, went in depth with the eyewitnesses, people who work for the company, I feel like at the end of the day, Miss Cleo is still a mystery. Like, I wish there were a group of people like, hey, Miss Cleo read me. Here's a recording. This and this happened. That would be so nice to have. Hmm. But you guys let me know what you think down below. On oh, Miss Cleo, was she a true talent behind a faulty company or a faulty talent working with even faultier people? Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. And like I always say, as above, so below. As a thing, so a thigh. Until next time, you guys, I'm Shay. Thank you, Gigi. Yeah, 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 y